Experts say that facial recognition and artificial intelligence are the future of security and surveillance. But are they really given all the concerns over the invasion of privacy and how in the words of George Orwell, Big Brother is watching over us? Mark Chi, the business director for Southeast Asia, Hong Kong and Macau at the Chinese AI unicorn U2 Technology, shed some light on the matter. Okay, Mark, thanks for joining us. Um, I understand your company was founded in uh, 2012 uh, from China, a Shanghai-based uh, China company. Uh, two founders originally. Yes. Uh, gone through several rounds of funding. Three rounds. Three rounds of funding. Um, and I think about two years ago, your valuation hit unicorn status, $1 billion, right? That's right. Um, some of the investors include Sequoia from right. America. What was the main thing for them uh, to invest in? What was the main magnet for them? Well, AI took on a very... Uh, became very popular. Everybody is talking about AI. Okay. All the way from US, when you know, they are also looking at AI. And when China start to invest in AI, a lot, of, a lot of companies see the potential and what AI can do for, in terms of productivity, technology, and helping people achieving um, better work performance, so productivity and all. So all these companies see that AI is the way to go, and they decided to invest in AI companies. Okay, so what we don't know is how many percent Sequoia and the other outside no, investors to. Um, but what was the main thing? I mean, because I know you do stuff in like financial services, you do stuff in uh, healthcare, you do you know lots of stuff within the military and even within the private sector, which is what you're here for in Malaysia today. Um, what in your you know in your feedback was the main thing for these guys to come in? What was the big picture? Was it the size of the market? Was it the technology that you have? What was it? Uh, allow me to correct that. I, we are not into the military aspect of that, but more on public safety. Okay. So, so today you're enforcement, right? Which yes. is, you've done a deal with auxiliary police in Malaysia? Exactly. Okay. So the, yeah, I, the main thing would be, the driver, main driver would be the potential of what AI can do and uh, you know, bringing values to companies and to people. That was the, the main thing that drives, you know, encourage, I mean, encourage the companies to invest. So very quickly, just explain the essence of, of the kind of technology that you've got, that you've got with the forest today. Oh, today, um, talking about the auxiliary police force, what we have is actually the offline video analysis. It allows, a, a, okay, the AFSP is the first one in the, uh, in the country to use facial recognition for body-worn camera. I mean, you heard about body-worn cam body camera being used widely. But mostly they are being used to just record videos of uh, what ha the, the transaction, what, hap what happens when the police engage the public. So what AFSP has gone ahead using our world-class leading technology is to use, to apply facial recognition to analyse the, num the people that was captured, recorded in the video. And then what they do is that they go back, when they go back to base, they doctor in, then they do a comparison against the, their list of uh, person of interest to see whether any of the people that they came across in the premises are uh, of interest. So they will allow, this will allow the officers, when the next time when they're on duty, they can be on the lookout for you know, these, these few characters that may have popped up. So that's phase one. Then moving ahead for phase two, we can also start to explore uh, online video analysis where officers can be alerted when you know when a, a wanted person is appears in front of them, so that would in fact be more effective. Okay, so understand this current project with the auxiliary police. Right. It's uh, we don't know how many years it is, but it's for a number of years, right? Correct. And it's, I think it's kicked off with sixty-seven uh, uh, um, really? users, really? right? Really? Um, what is the uh, intention for for you two in Malaysia? I mean, how big of a market is this really? Is it really in the, in the police force, you know, the civil service, or is it really in the private sector? We see, we see potential in both the public sector and the private sector. I mean, for example, like private sector, you can use it for the mall, using you know, our algorithm, the metadata derived from it to do analysis on how perhaps, for example, you go to a mall, which, which shops receive the highest traffic flow, or within a shop, which of the shelf receive the most attention and which products people always hang around, look at it, and this may help to drive sales for retail shops. Then you also can use it for things like a data center, where you can, when you need to secure a place, 
like you know, data center is a very sensitive area, and then you want to make sure that not everybody walk wander around the data center doing you know, um, doing funny things. Data center need to be very secure because, like for example, if you have if you have uh, let's say a few racks in the data center, you want to make sure that only authorized people can go to your racks and not like my guys loitering in front of your racks and trying to do anything funny. You want to be alerted and be kept informed. So you know data center is a big business today. Everybody's talking about building data center. So our solution, E2 solution will help to you know, um, form this ring to make sure that only the authorized people are being, uh, have access to this area. This area, <coughs> this area of facial recognition and artificial intelligence, I think over a number of years as the data, more and more data gets fed into your, into your backbone, I think. Um, the machine gets cleverer and cleverer right. and cl cleverer, right? It's like right. a human brain, right? Yes. Uh, how, how is it regulated? Um, is, is it regulated at all? How do you make sure that the users are not, um, not innocent? Mm. Okay, the users are not innocent? Excuse me. I mean, obviously, if, if it falls into the wrong hands. Okay, coming from the anger. Yeah. So, okay, so we, you talk about machine learning. So, if you look at computers in the yesteryears, mm. you just tell the computer to go from point A to point B. Then you just give an instruction and that's what they do. But today's with machine learning, you, the you teach the machine what to do and they start to, as they mature, they start to know to do their own thing. They will write their own algorithm, uh, develop their own learning pattern and they can start learning as fast as possible. Just like when a child grew up from maybe two years old and when they start to three years old, five years old, they start to know, they start to have these connective capabilities, they can start, start to learn on their own. So we at E2, we are very sure that we only sell, law f sell our system to lawful agencies and we also teach them that, you know... Um, what are the lawful agencies, uh, governments, which might use them to monitor political uh, uh, opponents <laughs> no, or political dissidents? That would be something beyond us. Okay. It's, it's, it's uh, similar to, I, I make a car. Mm -hmm. I give you a car to go from point A to point B. Of course, then you can't prevent the guy from driving to a mob, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So, so our, ours is that we have a good system that helps to make life easier for everybody. So in E2, we have a team of scientists that monitors this technology. It's curated under close watch to make sure that the system doesn't go haywire. Because the moment there's this data integrity issue, that things start to go haywire, in fact, it will affect your whole database. It, will, you know, it totally wrecks the whole system. So we have to deploy very qualified professionals to monitor them, to make sure that the systems are working correctly. What if the systems are then smarter than the, than the engineers? Uh, we, we still have, we are very sure that we, that's why, okay, that's the reason why in, in E2, the brain resides in Shanghai to be curated. We do not sell a brain to, let's say, Singapore or anywhere outside Malaysia or anywhere, because we have to make sure that they are qualified people, scientists that know how to manage them. It's a team of scientists and not just one. Okay. So, so that, that's a very heavy responsibility and yes, that has to be taken seriously.